is it? Hello, I'm Max, um, and um, I am um, interested in the new updates on um, what is happening on Earth. What is Which the part of Earth? I don't, I don't pay up. I don't deal with all of Earth, but I do deal with some of it. My name is Perry. Hi, Perry. Um, um, I am working right now in England, well, dealing with people in England and the United States and some in the Australian area. Wonderful. That matters. Um, so I guess the main question is, is um, Ascension real? Um, well, it's not a news item, but it is supposedly real uh, from the standpoint of some of the people that I've talked to down there. Um, they do think that uh, there is something happening. There has been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of um, new things. Uh, I would say that it, from my vantage point, there is some, something happening. A change is coming about. What to call it? Uh, ascension, I'm not sure if that is fitting or not. Because I, I see a rise of more negativity than I do of positivity. Right, right. Uh -huh. So uh, I, I see that it's a descension. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, but they, they do claim that there are some people involved in uh, very positive movements, but I don't get involved with that too much. I'm more of a business person. We're more mm -hmm. into uh, discussing other things. How much of a mess is the situation, or is it somehow coordinated? What are the forces involved? Who is uh, in control? Who is in charge? Who is in charge? Mm -hmm. um, it depends on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. um, they would say that um, there's a lot of uh, individuals that have power, mm -hmm. but who's controlling them is the question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say that there is uh, there is uh, some very wealthy people on the planet that control a great deal of things. And you may not, everything may not go back to them immediately, but when you, uh, when you go back uh, and trace all the beginnings, there are a few people that have uh, beginnings in a great number of things. So How about people outside of Earth? What? How about uh, active forces from outside of Earth? Who is involved from outside of Earth? Oh, outside of Earth? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of uh, different... Uh, there's a lot of people really putting their finger in the pie. Um, the Gurkfik Nira's, they're working. The Ashtar Command... We hear about them, but they're pretty. Cl they do pretty secretive work. There is the Council of Nine, the Orion Council, all those different ones. But the one that uh, seems to do a, the most is the um, our separate smaller groups, mm -hmm. right? because it seems like they're more efficient and effective. Mm -hmm. If they have a great big group of people and everybody knows about them it's hard for them to move or do anything. Mm -hmm. But small groups of uh, rebellious little workers seem to be able to get more things done. I would say there is a group of uh, Octorians that's about, only about 50 Octorians strong, but they come to Earth and they do quite a bit of trading and business with different areas. And also, there's a, a group of, um, what are they called? I don't know. They're little green things. But anyway, um, they work as well doing some uh, major business on the planet with different countries and things. So it's smaller groups, I think, that are making the most uh, money mm -hmm. or m most trade agreements. What I'm doing is more interactive technologically. 
Can you share a little more? Yes. Yes. Um, I am helping to develop from here some uh, greater communication methods. Ah. So I'm working with some specific scientists uh, on some communications. That's about what I could tell you. Uh, are you born on Earth? Have you been born on Earth? No. Well, uh. well, yes. Um, I was born on Earth, but I don't like to admit that. And then you were brought up up there? Yes. After a period of time, I was, I'm from, I was born in 1884. Somewhere in that area, yeah, 1884. Uh, and um, then I was taken when I was about in the, the year uh, 1912. Ah. Oh. Did you have to die to be taken? I didn't die, but they faked the death, yes. Ah. Oh. Okay. And, um, and uh, what culture did you grow up in? Uh, England. I mean, in 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 the space. Oh, in space. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been in a couple of different places, but um, I say mostly I was on Era for a while. Mm -hmm. That's where they dropped me off after about uh, ten months in space. Oh, what was the reason for them to take you? Um, I. Uh, I wanted to be taken. I just, I just had a really terrible life there, mm -hmm. and I was really sick. Uh huh. But I had a lot of good ideas, and I was um, pretty smart when it comes to some technical things. And it wasn't hard for them to teach me some things. So how did you communicate to them? How did they find out that, that you want to be ah, taken? All right, that's a good question because I I was like, man, early 20s when they first contacted me, but I thought it was a joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was, uh, he just appeared as a regular guy, I guess, um, to me, and he was saying, well, for a for a twenty year old, you're very talented for in this and that, but you seem rather sickly. And I said, "Yeah, I'm not not doing too good." And he was uh, asked me if I wanted to go uh, to somewhere else, and I said, "Where else?" And he said, mm, "Maybe uh, somewhere in the stars." And I said, "In the stars." That's crazy. But uh, he talked to me several times. And he was an interesting bloke. He really, really was. And uh, finally convinced me that he wasn't lying. And they showed me a couple things. And I went and visited the ship uh, a, a few years after that. And it took me a while to decide because um, it just seemed dangerous or something. I'm a, I wasn't quite sure, but I'm glad I did. Wow. Oh, it was there a special program, or did they work by themselves? They were working alone. Uh -huh. At that time, in that part of the world, at that time, they weren't looking for aliens mm -hmm. so they weren't aware of them mm -hmm. so and as it was that was a good thing for those of us who wanted to to leave the planet and do other things mm -hmm. so it was a good time for them to come and take people so why would the aliens do that why would they want us yeah they needed people that understood the uh, Earth, mm -hmm. 
and understood um, certain things about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you came there, did you meet a community which is already like Earth people, Earth immigrants? There were some, but more there were more more other people than humans. They looked a little differently, but they were very good chaps and nice people. And but they they were a little strange to me at first, of course. But there was about seven or eight other humans there that had been there for not that long, maybe five or six years more than me. Mm -hmm. um. And uh, we got along all right, and it was a lot of learning, but. but I think that it worked out well. Were you treated fairly? Oh, much. Oh, yeah. They uh, he they healed my illnesses and made me feel much better. And also, they gave me a lot of teaching, and uh, I didn't have to really. I I actually got to do more things that I wanted to do there than than I had done before. So it was a great, great time for me, actually. It is still a great time. How much, what percent of time do you spend on Earth? About, about four hours every couple months. Ah, are you speaking now from outer space? Yes. Do you have to wear special headphones to speak? I have to have a special, yes, unit. It's a translator, but I don't need to translate because you speak English. And I do know English. So I what is that communicator? Uh, How does it work? Uh, well, it can be used as a translator, but it's just a communication design device. And also, it can um, do other things as well, but communication is its main purpose. So... You're located far away, so it the signal tra travels faster than time, right? Yes. And uh, is there a retransmitter locally on Earth, or are you? How do you get from Jim's head to? How does the signal goes from Jim's uh, from Jim's body to your communicator? It's transported there. <laughs> Is it like subspace, some sort of um, no, it's, etheric, it's, etheric? No, no. Um, you would have to understand some parts of quantum physics to understand how it works entirely. But it is that it is from my mouth directly to you. There is no inter. There is no passing through space. It is from. It's here and it's there. That's it. But you have to understand how it, the quantum physics and how to fold um, existent, uh, existing fabrics of times, if you want to call it that. That's not even correct. But, um, but it, you just pass over that distance. It's not that you go through it, it you pass over that. It's, it's here and then it's there. That's it. So there is no retranslation. You just get into Jim's... Um, are you connecting to Jim's head or some other part of the body? I have to connect to his head because that's where the uh, communication uh, portions are that I, are necessary for me to talk through. Um, are you using some... Are you relying on some implants in Jim's head or it can be transmitted to anybody's head? No, it cannot be transmitted to anybody's head, but he has open channel areas and he does have implants for that, yes. So if you wanted to, could you speak directly to Max, to me, to my head? Do you have the implants necessary? Good question. But I would have to check, but you, it would appear that you are someone that would probably have them. Oh, so you cannot speak to people without implants. Well, there has to be the one, yes. 
Ah. Can I ask for implants of, of that kind? Of course. So I'm asking. And I'll let them know. Thank you. All right, so. All right, what did you want to really know about? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I already asked uh, who, what are the forces that actually do the things and um, there, there specifically, are, go ahead. I know, they have specific names for these different groups that control the Earth. The Cabal, the Illuminati, all those different names. But these people, although connected with those, are actually outside of the direct influence of those particular groups, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yet have great communication with them because they believe in their uh, their mission. Mm -hmm. But they don't want to be known as part of those groups mm -hmm. uh, for particular reasons, although I believe my suspicions are that they are de definitely members, but they do not want to be seen as members. Um, so, have you heard about economic um, economic uh, plan of transformation? Oh, realignment of your economic systems? More like the new economy. There is some new economy which is coming from outer space, and I wonder what it is. Yes, it's coming from the Kiel or in the Idemis area. Um, they are wanting to revamp your systems. Uh, they're not allowed to do that. But they have done a couple little things. Um, uh, but um, nobody, it's, it's so uh, simplistic that nobody is even aware of it at this point. But it is the basis for change. Thank you. Um. Do you see any ecological disasters coming? Yes. Is there any special plan for that? Any any special plan by the aliens? No, 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 no. Uh, your uh, Gurk Vikmir people will work with that, but no other uh, outside forces are, well, that's not true. There are some spiritual forces that are at work there, but as far as aliens, well, not as many aliens are allowed to do that. The uh, Grook Fikneer has permission. Right, thank you. <clears throat> there are a couple others that might lend a hand also, but I cannot mention their names. Sure. How about the Blue Sphere Alliance? Have you uh, come across them? The what? Blue Sphere Alliance. Oh, yes. You mean the Blue Avians? Yes. Yes, they exist. And they are part of uh, the solar system at large. They uh, help to control traffic. They're like traffic policemen uh -huh. in some ways. But they allow, of course, um, there are certain rules for certain species who have not always been most upstanding. So they have more uh, rules and regulations than some of us that have been uh, law-abiding all along. Right. Thank you for explaining. Mm-hmm. Yes, but they, the Blue Avians are quite savvy mm -hmm. when it comes to how they handle the situations of the, of the solar system mm -hmm. and to some extent even in the galaxy. They are quite learned and have a lot of experience in uh, peaceful control. Super. How about Zetas? Are Zetas still a problem? Zetas? You mean Zeta Greys? Yes. Zeta Reptilians? What, Zeta, Zeta Greys. Zeta Greys are not as much a problem as they once were. They are governed 
like everyone else in the galaxy. But, of course, at one point they did not uh, follow that governing very, very uh, easily. But now they are changing in their, or seemingly changing, I should say. I am not, I'm not certain that I buy or believe that they are changing that much. But they say they are changing and their actions are, are different than they used to be, but we shall see. I give it some time and then I think they will revert back to their old ways, personally. I see. Um, so who are the, ma the main enemies of humanity? The main enemies? Insectoids. Really? Yes, some insectoids. The Nords, although coming under the guise of being beautiful and friendly and lovely, are controlling and want power. And I wouldn't trust the Nords. I would also not trust... Um, there is a couple of reptilian groups that are uh, bad factions, should we say. But, of course, they're... There are not all, not everyone out here is um, upstanding. Right. Um, but I, the I, most dangerous, I think, I think the most dangerous personally mm -hmm. are the Nords because they, they seem to be able to charm uh, humans at times and get away with it. Right. And then do nasty things. Ah. But don't get in their way. They will kill you. Ah. Right. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I really like the Nordic type. So, I mean, yes. I guess we're humans of Nordic type. So there is something yes. in them which is very charming. They are very charming. Yes. But whenever they want something, they will get it. Hmm. Uh, are they still involved? I was thinking that they were kind of expelled from, from Earth. They were. They were expelled for a matter of 30 years from Earth um, to do some regrouping. They were expelled by the galactic forces 30 human years of, uh, because they were involved in some very treacherous things in the Second World War, Second World War, and um, but the, it couldn't be proven that they were after world domination. But it was proven that they gave technology that they shouldn't have to the Germans. Uh huh. Guys, so are they back? Uh, they're allowed back into the solar system, wow. but at this point, not back onto the Earth as far as um, physically. No one is allowed to be physically on Earth without permission. Okay, so I'm running out of time, and um, I have plenty of questions, but I'm not, not sure which ones should I ask. So, is there anything else you can uh, give me advice or our community advice where we should look? What should we study? What should you study? Research. What should you research as a, as a civilization? No, a group of... Uh, I'm a, from a group of Hukula, people who work with a gym and uh, ah. I'm interested in channeling. So my group of people who are interested in channeling. What should you as a scientist be looking for? And a uh, researcher into aliens. You should be looking for those that are too friendly in some <laughs> ways. You should be looking for those that are willing to give you gifts and then uh, pull them back. Uh, do not be very trusting of aliens. Of course, you, there are some that are very trustworthy, but those that want to become part of your planet you should be very wary of. There is alternative. There is another agenda. So be aware of that. Uh, the other thing is, you should be aware that gold is a very, very valuable 
um, thing throughout the universe. And hold on to it as tightly as you can, because many aliens will try to take it. Can the aliens just synthesize it using some alien technologies? Why do they need natural gold? They need natural gold, yes. Why? And they can actually try to beam it out of the Earth or out of the, out of the planet, but it would be uh, caught by the Galactic Council. So wow. They, um, that would be against the law and that would be severe consequences. But they do, they have taken much of it. They've taken much of your uh, gold supply already. I see. Therefore, therefore, you realize there's an economic collapse. Mm -hmm. You are on the verge of it uh -huh. for many years now. Mm -hmm. So whether that will happen, I do not know, but I foresee that it will. Mm -hmm. And that is something else you should look into. Mm -hmm. What, who will take over after that happens? That will be a very important thing. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. I, I invite you to come next time. And um, now I invite, can you pass over the microphone to Yogananda? Ah, oh, Yogananda. He is in the spiritual realm. Yes. One moment, please. Uh, well, it was uh, rather good of you to ask to talk to me, but I'm not sure that it did much good. Um, just a thought. It was very interesting, especially your story, personal story, was very interesting. Thank you. What story? Personal. Oh, yes. I guess. All righty, then. One moment. Thank you. <laughs> 